First question is from Nick Hand Fit. What are the best exercises for developing rotational power? Oh, Justin. Oh, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody love picked this questions. for you. Yeah, so uh, the best exercises, well, I mean, first thing is uh, just being able to control uh, your body properly and be able to anchor your, your body down properly. I think a lot of people don't realize like how important uh, proper foot strength is in being able to ground yourself first to be able to really generate even more power and rotational power as a result of that. So really it's, it's, it's about being able to have like ultimate control and anchoring your body first. And then we get into stuff where, you know, the obvious stuff where we're going to get into, uh, you know, like trunk rotational exercises with you know, cables, uh, with rubber bands, with a medicine ball where I'm, you know, violently sort of throwing things into the wall with rotation, um, but uh, being able to control uh, that power is something to really consider before then really going through and accelerating uh, uh, that process through, uh, you know, utilizing uh, fast twitch muscles. So to that point, then, do you have, Justin, so do you have something that you prefer to teach somebody and then that you prefer for most optimal benefits? So in other words, like, uh, do you prefer using like bands as a teaching tool and then like maybe like the medicine ball throw as the the greatest expression of that? Do you have like that you gravitate towards? Yeah, I would say that a, a band is probably the most fluid. I know we talked about this on an episode with just bands where they provide a little less of the clunky uh, experience when you're going to, um, you know, f through this full range, because a lot of times, like even with the, the cable, uh, the plates itself will add like a little bit of a, of a shift or, you know, you're going to get, you're, if, if you're moving something really quickly, you want it to be smooth. And I think the, the bands provide like the smoothest experience with that. And also too, like a, a pail of press uh, is something that is something I would probably start people with to see how well they control their body and are able to anchor their body properly with their core and stabilize. Uh, so that either starting, you know, just on your knees and going from there, sitting on a ball uh, or standing or being in a split stance, you kind of go through those variations to see how well you stabilize uh, being pulled left to right and, and where the discrepancies lie. And then uh, from there, I add strength to that. So something like a, uh, you know, a cable machine is a great one to include in, in terms of loading that a little bit more heavily uh, and then expressing that fully with the, the medicine ball is something that I would kind of progress into that uh, direction. Yeah. Someone might be wondering why rotational strength and power is even important. Um, every time you walk, you incorporate rotational ability. I mean, when you walk, you'll notice as your right foot steps forward, your left arm steps forward. It's called this, this counter-rotation mm -hmm. process. Of course, it happens when you run. You could try walking where you don't rotate, where your left your left foot moves forward, so does your left arm, and you look very strange and it feels uh, very awkward. Robotic and awkward. <laughs> yeah, so rotation is extremely important. It connects the upper and lower body. And then in sports, of course, this is very important. It doesn't matter whether you're swinging a bat, throwing a ball, throwing a punch catching something, turning to your opponent. You have to have good stability um, in, in, in rotational ability. Um, the muscles involved really uh, you know, center around the core. Mm -hmm. Training the rotational, uh, your rotational ability really develops your core in some pretty remarkable ways. You get a nice, strong, tight-looking core by training this uh, particular type of movement. Not a lot of people do it in gyms. A lot of people kind of avoid rotational exercise. The most I've ever seen the average person do are like twisting crunches, which really isn't training the rotation as much as it's yeah. training. A Russian twist. You see those. Yeah. Every once in a while. yeah. You'll see that sometimes. I like bands. I like bands a lot for this. And here's the deal. If, if you don't train rotational power, start slow, start slow, develop some strength. Once you get comfortable and stable, then you can add some speed to well, this. And to add a few. So I, you may have seen, like, I don't know if anybody follows me, but maybe some of you guys do, but like I, I've done, uh, <laughs> I've done some stuff with the, um, uh, the sledgehammer and, uh, you know, I think this is one of those exercises that just looks cool. And so a lot of people post it, but, uh, to be honest, like what, um, what I was talking about in terms of like, if I have the ability to anchor myself, to stabilize, to be able to do all these things and now express myself fully with, with accelerating all of this, uh, I love to use the, the sledgehammer to now 
add a rotational element to it that in includes my entire body. It's not just my upper body, my shoulders slamming down. Uh, you know, I really have to be able to connect to my legs and my hips because legs and hips, uh, I, I think a lot of athletes, they don't really can, like understand how vital that is to be able to drive, uh, you know, even more to maximize their, their power output. Uh, and so to be able to to firmly stabilize and have strength in your feet to ground yourself, that's what's going to determine how much of volume of power that I'm going to infuse into now the rotational part of the movement that's up top. And, and now boxers know this, like you're throwing a punch. It, you throw a lot harder punch once you connect your legs and hips and, and get that all to to uh, smoothly uh, connect all together at once. So we're, we're talking about doing this for like ath athletic purposes. Sal mentioned like walking, you know, that's, it has a big play and, and rotational strength, but I tell you what, this is uh, probably the number one injury that I had happen to clients that were training with me uh, was when I would neglect doing anti-rotational and rotational exercises, and yet you know they would still get hurt, and they always got hurt doing something so simple. Mm -hmm. It was always picking a shampoo bottle up or pulling a weed. Or bending over to pick up a, a little dog uh, uh, dog food, or just something so basic. Yet I was over here able to bench and squat and deadlift with them with all this weight. But then they they would throw their back out mm -hmm. uh, doing so, such a basic movement. And it is it's it's an area that uh, most people neglect. And even if you you don't have any uh, desires to be you know an athlete or you're not pursuing anything uh, in that world in that realm. There's a tremendous amount of value for just the average person to incorporate rotational strength into their routine, and I like I like bands as just the the staple overall. Like it's good for advanced and for beginners. It's a good place to start. Justin's point of making sure you're grounded first before you move into more explosive things like the sledgehammer and tossing the ball. Yeah, and you you work on this and you get a really nice core. I, one of the side effects of our maps because maps performance is our I'd say the one program we have that does the most emphasis on rotation. And the comments we get from that program are always uh, centered around how awesome people's core looks and develops. And it really has to do with the rotational exercises. Mm -hmm.